with you. And in your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual, usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, the last ones worked for only an hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you, did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? As you are envious, are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I see a lawsuit coming. This is totally unfair. See, as we use our logic, our human brain, we compute what's fair, and more importantly, what's not fair. We evaluate the situations, and we judge its fairness. And we can immediately recognize that God is unfair. He gives to those who show up the last, the same as those who were first. This is unfair, as we can see. More should be given to those who work more. God gives, he's generous. You see, he's generous to a fault. We look at the generosity of God and we see immediately that he shorted those who worked the longest and he rewarded those who worked the least. He's an enabler. He's codependent. God needs to have his ways corrected. So let's make our point. Let's sue to make our point. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic as we look at God's actions According to our human understanding of fairness, we have to step back and truly look at what God does, not only for others, but also for us. And I think we begin to see with a softer heart. When we actually begin to question our understanding of fairness, when we begin to question the gauge that we use to measure fairness, and look at from a different perspective, one from God's perspective, we might get a glimpse of what God's thinking is. The parable that we read today is, an, is Jesus' attempt to reveal God to us. You see, God sent Jesus to this world to help us understand what's God's will. He came to reveal that will for us, and this parable and many others Jesus shared with us to reveal this personality and this call that God has for each of us. What's interesting is while meeting with a group interested in joining the Catholic Church, RCIA, earlier this week, 
We explored this gospel and we asked some questions. What does this gospel mean to me? What is this generosity that God is calling me to do? Well, first, there were many different responses to this reading, and I'd like to share a couple, if I may. Sharing these responses, I think, is a reflection of the community, and maybe you can identify uh, with one of these. One response was how difficult it was to let go of the things that we worked so hard to get. The amount of effort that we expended to acquire these goods, these items that we now have under our control, these treasures that we toiled so long to attain, it makes it very challenging and difficult to share and to give away. It's difficult to be generous. And I think the word mine kind of describes the attitude or the mentality and it begins to define the fairness issue. This is mine and that is yours. And as it was being shared and discussed, we revealed, it was revealed how uneasy being generous is. The discomfort that's felt, and it's felt at the foundation of their being. And it is difficult to then match up our actions with the call of the gospel. Another response that was shared was the parable reflects God's openness to us to come to the kingdom of heaven or to the kingdom of God. God's love is available to those who accept his love at any stage of life. If you were a cradle Catholic, should we harbor ill will because we went to church? We, through all of our lives, participated in various activities, assisted with the ministry of the church, donated money to the uh, building fund, tithed every week. We have sustained a life of being generous, and yet we watch someone come and join the church after maybe a life that we would not agree with or that not, does not agree with the gospel. And yet God welcomes them into the family as well maybe at the last moments of their life. God's love and his mercy is generous to all. Another response to the reading uh, was from a man whose father, an elderly man, was not baptized and not practicing any religion. The son was waiting for his father to say, it's too late, there is no time. God would not want me or God would not welcome me. This reading is, as the son told me, it's in his back pocket so that he can bring it out and use it when he hears his father say that, that God God will take him at any hour. So where are we? Were you able to identify with one of these responses? Or do you have your own response that maybe is making you uneasy? making it difficult to sit here this morning and listen to these words. Ultimately, our call is to see that God has a different way of thinking. As God has revealed in our first reading this morning in Isaiah, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. So God is generous. God sees what we need and he fulfills the need. His generosity should not be compared with what he gives to others. You see, his love and his generosity is provided to us based upon our needs. His ways are not our ways. What's interesting is the parable uses money to communicate the message of generosity. But generosity is not limited to money or material things. God is calling us to be generous also with our time and our talents. We have many opportunities to be generous with our time, money, and our talent. Time spent with family and friends is most important. Nurturing relationships, especially with our family and friends, is critical. Also, time spent serving those in need. Time spent with community organizations that try to better the life of others, that promote goodwill. 
We can be generous with our talents. Each of us here has different gifts that God has given to us. We can use these gifts to bring God's love to others. Not only here, but also primarily in your families, but also in the church, in our community. We have various service organizations where we can provide our talents and our time to improve life for others. Should we sue God for his unfair generosity? Should we take God to court because his actions don't make sense according to our logic? No, certainly not. God is very generous. His generosity is measured with a different gauge. Since we were made in the image and the likeness of God, we too are called to be generous. Generous like God. Will it be easy to be generous? No. Will it be rewarding to be generous? Maybe, maybe not. It might take time for us to change our hearts and change our attitude. Is it the right thing to do? Absolutely. <laughs>